Okay, next I want to bring up Jim Bruno with the Local Water Company. He's going to give a review of our public hearings concerning the Kentucky Turnpike Water District 1 and 2. Yes, good morning. Um, back in September 2000, the Little Water Company merged with the Kentucky Turnpike Water District. In February 2012, I became for this body and provided a summary of the accomplishments of the um, since the merger by the Little Water Company, and we also passed a merger amendment, which included a number of housekeeping issues that we needed to. Uh, implement. One of those was uh, to dissolve the Kentucky Turnpike Water District. So since that time, fiscal court has uh, appointed new commissioners to the Kentucky Turnpike Water District. These commissioners met on um, March 5th and unanimously, unanimously voted to dissolve the Kentucky Turnpike Water District. We presented then later that evening in fiscal court the results of that. <coughs> that uh, the commissioners had voted to dissolve the Kentucky Turnpike Water District. In that meeting, uh, fiscal court agreed to have a public hearing then, which was conducted earlier this morning, where we received public comments regarding dissolving the Kentucky Turnpike Water District. There was uh, eight people who attended the meeting this morning, including Judge Roberts and uh, the Magistrate Oshbaugh, Ashbaugh, excuse me. And um, we had two comments. Uh, one was from Mike Higgins. He is one of the commissioners for the Kentucky Turnpike Water District. Uh, he agreed that the Kentucky Turnpike Water District should be dissolved and that uh, also in lieu of uh, it acknowledging that House Bill Number 1 was passed by the legislature, which incorporated a number of additional oversight, reporting, and training requirements for special districts, which the Kentucky Turnpike Water District would be one. And because the Kentucky Turnpike Water District has no assets, has no liabilities, has no customers, there, there's no purpose for it uh, being organized that uh, it be dissolved. Uh, the other comment we had was from uh, Tommy Crumbacker, who uh, recommended that the Little Water Company provide free water to the three buildings, I assume three Bullock County buildings here. Um, so those were the comments that were presented. Um, and I guess we received no comments that were in opposition to dissolving the Kentucky Turnpike Water District. So as a result, of, I would recommend that fiscal court pass a resolution uh, to petition the Public Service Commission to dissolve the Kentucky Turnpike Water District. This would actually be the last step of this process that this court had to do. They would go to PSC and they would make that ruling. So um, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. If there are no questions, I make a motion to petition the PSC to dissolve the Kentucky Turnpike Water Districts 1 and 2. Thank you, Regina. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or discussion? And Ms. Pope, you call the roll. Ms. Ashbaugh? Yes. Mr. Hunt? Yes. Mr. Lysma? Yes. Mr. Bradshaw? Yes. Judge Roberts? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Next up, uh, uh, Economic Development Director John Snyder. Tom, do you have anything to report us today? Oh, really, I, it's a pleasure being here. I, I am getting my feet wet. I'm not going to be able to meet maybe every one of these, but I want to get to with each one of you. I'm upstairs anytime you're through. Uh, you and I talked the other day. Stop by. Uh, we're at to uh, sit down and talk with you, but I'm going to get out and make uh, calls to you and sit down and see where we go and what we want to do when we grow up. Um, it's been an exciting two weeks for me. I've said a lot of things that uh, learning about the county and what's going on in the county. But I do want to make sure you understand, if I'm not here when I'm on the agenda, there's probably a reason for it. Okay? And I appreciate all your all's time and help. Thank you. And John, I have put uh, the, economic, the economic development director on the agenda since we had the former executive director. and. Uh, you know, you and, I, you and I have had this conversation since the fiscal court, since the property <coughs> taxes 
Since we, since we, the fiscal core, you, the taxpayers, provide $115,000 to the Economic Development Agency, I just thought it was best to have someone come and speak about what's going on. Judge, I'll be glad to do that when I'm able to walk through. More than happy to do it, but I'm also making the offer to the magistrates and to yourself. But anytime I can be available to you, please call. Thank you. I was looking forward to you um, getting more funding from other entities to assist with this economic development agency. That's part of the plan. Thank you. Thank you, John. Okay, next. Magistrates, this is not on the agenda, but I talked to some of you all about this before the meeting started. I made a motion to accept Meadowmark Lane into our county road system. Second, you want to get a second part? Yeah, let's do this matter. We need the special. Well, there's no motion so far here. Okay. Um, I was just given uh, information on that this morning, and it is my opinion to the fiscal court uh, interpretation of KRS 178040, 178.010, as well as our local county ordinance that is actually a leak. Um, in July 13th of 2004, uh, KRS 178010, uh, chapter paragraph 3, specifically states, however, on or after July 13, 2004, this report may not accept a private road, street, or highway, it goes into detail, unless it meets the minimum construction standards established by this report, which we have done an ordinance um, on that. And also KRS 178.040, paragraph 2, also states very clearly, all county roads and public roads <coughs> Uh, that are being adopted into the county road system after July 13, 2004, shall occupy a minimum right away of 30 feet, 15 feet in direction as measured from the center road line unless the physical court finds that a first foot minimum cannot be met due to the topography of the road or other extraordinary circumstances. All county roads and all public roads that were in existence prior to July 13, 2004 shall not be required to occupy a minimum right away um, in the width of 30 feet, etc. And it goes on to talk about that. After, like we had talked about before, after that July 13th of 2004, the entire road structure in Commonwealth Kentucky was changed. And we adopted ordinances that support that. If we adopt a road that is not in compliance with the KRS, we will lose our state money that matches us for our county roads. That's the law of the Commonwealth. I didn't make that up. That, that's just what it is. Um, so if that road was not adopted prior to that time, unless it meets those qualifications today as it exists, it cannot be adopted into the county road system. Thank you, County Attorney. Oh, anybody want to speak on that? About just better work on that. Yeah. Tracy, come on up to the podium. <clears throat> While he's coming up here, we've had this discussion about this Meadowlark Lane as to why it wasn't taken into the system in 1976. And I've done some research on the situation. I firmly believe Meadowlark Lane should have been taken into the county road system in 1976. Now, at that point, I was in elementary school. I'm telling my age. That's not that yeah. And why it wasn't, I do not, I do not know. But um, Tracy has some folks here that live on that road, and Tracy, I'll let you do some speaking. Yeah, um, the, um, the, the road is dedicated for public use, so it's not a private road. It, it, it was dedicated for public use back in 1976, and there's a total of five or six roads in the subdivision on both sides of Highway 44. And for some reason, Meadowlark Lane was overlooked. All the other roads are maintained by the county and have been since 76. The road was a hard surface road since day one. Um, the first house built on the road is at the very end of the road. So the road has been used, you know, as a hard surface road since 76. Um, the, uh, I understand it doesn't meet all the ordinance requirements of 2004. 
Um, it does meet the minimum width requirements of 30 feet. Um, the, so the county already has a driveway of 30 feet on both sides of the cemetery and the, uh, a driveway of 60 feet through the remainder of the road. So it meets this, the state and county minimum requirement of road width. Um, and uh, like I said, I can't argue that it doesn't meet the current ordinance because I don't really know. And all I know is it was built just by the same people, the same method uh, as the other five roads that have been accepted since 76. So I'm thinking it's more of an oversight, uh, you know, through time. Then I don't think there was anything that really stopped it or made it where it was not accepted. I think it was more of an oversight. I think the developer had passed right, at the very tail end of the, 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 the uh, development of the subdivision. Um, the county has, has grown uh, quadrupled in size uh, since '76. Traffic has quadrupled. Um, there's also business activity. Um, there's also uh, uh, public safety issues and things like that with the higher traffic. Um, at this point in time, the, the, the public uses the road more than the residents do. And there's really no mechanism in our subdivision rules to pay for the road, uh, to maintain the road. Um, and I believe it's like that because it was intended to be accepted since day one. Um, and that's all I have. I can't really argue with the fact that it doesn't meet the current ordinance. But maybe if we can get this passed and go on the on the list once the moratorium is looked at, maybe it can be taken care of. Yeah, there's no such thing as a moratorium. I keep hearing that being used, okay? The law changed in the Commonwealth of Kentucky on July 13, 2004. Okay? The Commonwealth has all kinds of strings attached to money that we get to operate our roads on, okay? If and I'm not trying to be disrespectful, we got whole kinds full of this. Everybody has to be treated equally, which was actually the purpose behind the state law to bring counties up to a certain level, okay, because there was so much discrepancy in who got what uh, state monies to fund roles, okay? Um, but if we violate this, we run in danger of losing the hundreds of thousands of dollars the county gets to maintain our current roles. There, without question, is a public road. But public roads are not by and of themselves county roads. Um, sometime between 1977 and July 12, 2004, it should have been taken in if it was going to be. When it was not, that road and many others that are out there were left. They were abandoned, so to speak, by the Commonwealth, okay, when the criteria, when the criteria went into place. Um, so now it does put on the people that live on that road. If you want the road taken in, you have to pay it. That's the same thing happened in my own neighborhood. I mean, that, that, that's the purpose of the ordinance. We all had to chip in and pay the road to get it up to the standards before it could be taken in. Um, that's just where they got us in a real pickle. There is no look back. It either meets the criteria or it doesn't. The judge can ask the county road supervisor to go out there and measure and do all these things and see if it fits. But based on your own description, I can tell you that it's not if it's chunked up in sections because it has to be so thick. Um, and paid, right, Jim? Well, it is hard surface paper. And it has At the front part? All the way through. You have said that it's crumbling, is what your testimony there is, was at the last meeting? There is some deterioration, okay. yes. So that right there would not make it meet the minimum criteria. Um, there's nothing any of these folks can do, okay? And my job is to keep them from breaking the law and costing the taxpayers of this county hundreds of thousands of dollars potentially if we lose county road change. I'm not unsympathetic because it, it's every, there's lots of these roads. I said the one I live on was just like this under last year. Um, I'm just, just, I'm just saying that the five, five and six roads have well, to be the But it, it's all, that's the way the whole county, and the goal is, the purpose of the law is to treat everybody equal. I don't disagree, but somebody should have stood up before July 12th of 2004 because July 13th, the law changed. And sometimes from 1977 and that date in 2004, it should have happened. It failed to happen, which means it's under the new requirement. Jimmy, this road is not up to specs. 
It is not. No, it's crumbled up at all. It's got damage to it. For me to tell you it don't meet at all, I'd have to do core samples. You know, drill a core to see how much gravel is. But, but wouldn't, it have, wouldn't this road have to meet every single criteria? <coughs> okay. And this is the same situation we get in when folks want to come in and be grade as the great gravel roads in our county road system. Very little difference. After July 13th of 2004, we can't do that. Or we risk losing all of our county road day. Um, Mom, is there anything at all that can happen? Other than change the laws? Well, other than change the law, the people in the area could, like you said, choose to get the road to county road requirements and ask for it to be taken into the system. Okay. But that's the only way any road at this juncture comes in the county road. Okay, now, you all are aware of that, right, Middle Ark Lane residents? Are you all? That if you get that road up to a specification, of course, Jimmy Stivers would be the one to go ahead. He's your kind of To say if, it, if it's up to specs or not. If you get that road up to specs, <coughs> then you can bring it back before this court and ask for it to be taken in. You can even do a section of the road. You know, you don't have to do the whole thing. Um, I mean, arguably, we've got lots of county roads that are not the entire length of the road. They are only so many feet. I mean, that may be something else we'll get. The, uh, there was one ordinance I was looking at, I can't remember off the top of my head, I don't really have my notes here to bring it up. I think it's 100 dots, 177, 177, not 100. And it, it makes reference to subdivision rule or. No, I think mean, that starts at 100. The first two numbers are always the year that it's passed. But I mean, I'll be glad to talk to you about that. Okay, because um, and that that involves kind of certain instances of subdivision <coughs> road. Yeah, you know, I would mean, think it is since it was a subdivision road, then that would be to um, legal like have or should have been taken. Our most recent amended ordinance was in 2006, and it was the 2008 was amended to 2006-14 that says the county road standards. That's the government ordinance locally. But Tracy, I highly suggest you get with the county attorney on what you're saying concerning the subdivision. Yeah, I think you know what I mean on that. They were saying, they were saying or by, by subdivision rule or by ordinance. Tracy, I highly suggest you make an appointment with the county attorney and share with her what you share with me. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, you can always just work together to get that road up to spec. And then bring it back here to the court. <coughs> of course, Jimmy would have to check it to make sure it really is. Jimmy's not trying to get Yeah, yeah. We really will cross the fence. And then bring it back here to the court and let us revisit that. We have taken roads in recently that were brought to spec. We have taken them into the county road system. Mr. Watland, can you add anything to this? It would be beneficial to everyone there. Uh, to bring this road into the county. Is there anything that you may be able to add to this? With I, your think, expertise? I think the county attorney is correct. I wouldn't do anything against the law. As I mentioned last time, I feel that the, the law is pretty clear. And, you know, that's, that's the way it is. There's actually laws that says we can't touch it either. Well, again, I would, if I were you all, I would make an appointment with the county attorney and discuss this with her. Thank you. Anything else? No, that's it. Thank you all so much for coming in and appreciate you boys and your opinion on what you care about. Okay, next we have Marlene Hannah. She's going to bring up the second reading of Theodore and Carlene Bell's zone repair. Take it away, Marlene. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, first, please, is number 2013, Z05. heard this case on February 14, 2013, and they voted to send a, a favorable recommendation to fiscal court because the property is not large enough to remain agricultural and be one zoning would fit the use of the property. This business has been on the property for over 30 years 
and it operates as a retail greenhouse and nursery. <coughs> and of course, as you all know, um, there was some, some opposition because of metal rock Yes. Mr. Hunt? 
Yes. Mr. Lyshoff? Yes. Mr. Bradshaw? Yes. Judge Roberts? Yes. Motion carried. I know Mr. Ballas is here, so there you yeah, go. You want to say anything, Mr. Ballas? Pardon me? Did, did you want to say anything? No, ma'am. I'd just like to appreciate all the time y'all put into this and getting it through. It's very nice to meet you. I've never met you before. It's nice right. to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Members of the court, thank you very much for your patience and consideration of this all. Thank you. And Joe, thank you for your patience. Thank you. <laughs> okay, next up we have Jimmy Sowers talking about asphalt is. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Can't be for uh, bids for uh, asphalt material to be used this season, this construction season. We got the bids in and was opened uh, yesterday. We only had to receive one. And for surface, it was made of construction, and for surface, it was 41 49 per ton. For base, it was 40 49 per ton. 41 49 per ton for the surface, and 40 49 per ton for the the 89 cents increase, which is really good. The state contract right now is at $45. That's a $3.51 difference. So we don't look really good at you for one period instead of the same as the state contract. This means we're still holding good on the uh, regional state um, money that we've got left to put down. So I need action on this to accept this. I make a motion to accept the <coughs> bid on uh, for make up instructions. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or discussion? Jimmy, is that particular one nice here? here? No, I just said it was 49 cents higher. All the dice, okay. And hearing no other questions? Yeah, we uh, The 2013 ABC. Can you clarify that? Does that mean what they call it is a construction season, and that's called the time on the um, temperature that you've got full with does vary, but it usually really runs from the last part of March on to, say, December. Yeah. So, they could have just said end of 2013, December 31st. It's up to us to decide. It's up to the weather, more or less, they hope you can it. So you got that winter there, you might go a few weeks one way or the other either direction or you might lose some, but it's in that same period that's all construction season. And that's the season we bid on anything after December 31st. Okay. 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 Yes. Mr. Hunt? Yes. Mr. Lysma? Yes. Mr. Bradshaw? Yes. Judge Robert? Yes. yes. Motion carried. You don't need any of them on my court. Thank you. And Director Phillips, emergency services. What about this cell? Uh, Refresh my memory. Where are we on the June 1st deadline? How long has this county ever? Moving the EMS from the background? All I, Do you know the only thing I can hear from the emergency services committee meeting is um, Mr. Anderson from the fair board asked that the committee and fiscal court um, set a deadline to get EMS out of the fair, fairgrounds building and that um, a magistrate or somebody was, I think Mr. Bradshaw was going to be approached to talk to <coughs> Chief Hatfield about utilizing space in the old building and if not in some of the quotes that we received on the mobile buildings we were going to consider and i don't know where we're at in the process i was waiting to is there any update on this john i don't know that i was ever officially requested or whatever to do that i'll Do you want to comment on this? Because I know you sit in the 
don't see so much as the many meetings. Well, I thought that was the way we were headed to get the far place up there since they're not using it. And if not, then we would look at the other options, which would be obviously the credibility. I know we did in that meeting set of June 1st deadline. I don't know who was supposed to contact you, John. <clears throat> I'll give you Mr. Bradshaw. I can't tell you about him. Well, he's on the board, actually, other than Mr. Hackett. I'll give Mr. Magister Bradshaw to the meeting and bring him up to speed and we'll discuss in the meeting and go from there. All right, thank you, Mike. Okay, um, Larry. Larry Hackett, director of Salt Lake, being dumped in and hazardous household waste grant. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. 
Ms. Ashbaugh? Yes. Mr. Hunt? Yes. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Bradshaw? Yes. Judge Roberts? Yes. Motion carried. It's a little late for that, but um, are they going to provide you with a contract or? Yeah, yeah I've got here a right of entry from the county attorney's office. Okay. And uh, we've got a lot to do. All right. But, and they have to be done by October 1st. What do you do when you anticipate starting on this? I, I don't imagine they'll start probably until sometime in the May 1st of June. It's going to have to be dry to get that put it down in there. It's in a rough area. Yes. 
will be only for the county residents. <clears throat> and I can write off, uh, <clears throat> I would get with Martha, I can write off the inmates, I figure eight inmates, just handing, I can charge seven dollars and a quarter an hour for each of them, I can feed them, I can uh, pay for me, plus my benefits, and I can pay for a constable or a jailer, and of course I'll have to buy a few uh, gloves and uh, safety vests and things of that magnitude would have come up to around $1,700, $2,000. It's actually not, we're paying them anyway, but, then, uh, but it would be, I would probably try to have it at the Bull County Fairgrounds, probably where I would try to have it to get them off the road. And, you know. I see someone back there, namely the director of the fairgrounds, <laughs> with a big, wide-eyed expression on his face. You might want to get with him before you Well, I say I, I have to have a place <laughs> like that or somewhere suitable to where I have a lead time for vehicles. Now, you know, I can't have them coming off 44 and 20 feet. You know, I've got to have somewhere I put in there at the Bullock County Fairground. I mean, I'm sure I can get permission from them before I get anything. But, Here. Would this be a one day thing? Be about a five hour minute. Right. That's it. Would it be a weekend? Or? It would be on Saturday. I'll probably have it sometime in September or October. Of course, cool down a little bit. You said the Bullock County plates on <laughs> This may be something. Bullock County Red. 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 Well, driver's license. Oh, driver's license. Yeah. Okay, because I was going to say I see a lot of out of county plates in Bullock County. No, we do just like we do clean up there. So just driver's license. Right. Okay. And I, I don't know that we would get it. You know, I kind of feel like we might because we never have it. I make a motion that we let Larry pursue the hazardous household waste grant. Go here a second. I'll say second. <laughs> Thank you, Ruthie. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or discussion? Okay, Ms. Porter, call the roll. Ms. Ashbaugh? Yes. Mr. Hunt? Yes. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Mr. Bradshaw? Yes. Judge Roberts? Yes. Motion <coughs> carried. Okay. Uh, one more thing I want to know on this. I want to think about it. Uh, I've got a company that will come in here and put us two recycling dumpsters at the Judicial Building and at the Nine Million Annex Building or wherever. And what I would like to try, they'll do it free for four months. That's what I want y'all to think about this. But I believe with what we would recycle out of the judicial building, talking to Mike, what we would recycle out of our building, and what we would re recycle out of this building, I believe we could cut our garbage dumpster down to half. They take shredded paper, they take aluminum, they take uh, cardboard, uh, glass, and they put it all on them. They will come out here free and educate all the buildings, the directors, and they will furnish the dumpster and they'll do it for four months free. And at that time, I can monitor the waste to see if that will save us money or if it won't. So kind of be thinking about that, and I'll get a little bit more information too. And, uh, but it's something, when you all were talking about the dog, um, pound the other day. I had talked to this company about a year ago and I never had, didn't take time to pursue it or whatever. But anyway, I, I did. Uh, I got the echo tickets and see how many times they pick up this building, how many times they do the judicial building, how many times they do the nine money annex. And I believe we can save some money. And if it gets to the point where there's more than 500 pounds in these recycled numbers, they'll charge us nothing. So, Thank you, Larry. Thank you all. Thank you. Keep it in mind. Okay, Director Hawkins, expanded jurisdiction. You're up. Good morning. Good morning. See. Um, I'm sure you're ready to do it. Let's go. Shoot out. What do you got in your packet? The expanded jurisdiction uh, <coughs> order. Uh, agreement, I'm sorry. That uh, I'd like for 
show is fine. <coughs> Every three years we have to uh, go through this. Uh, the agreement is with the Department of Housing in Frankfurt. And basically this time all we did was clean up some language. Uh, there were some changes in some color books. And we made those changes. And that's about it. So I'm asking you to uh, give the judge permission to sign.
take a sip of some grass that's being put into this thing. The two quotes you have in front of you, I apologize for the third one that I can't force you to send me quote. I want you to just call it. I did speak with A1 this morning, he verbally gave me an hour on it, and it was actually $7,850 higher than the two you had before. This thing needs to be serviced and it needs to be done probably while the weather is where it is. Because if you wait until it starts getting 80, 90 degrees, you're going to have the county attorney and all those judges over there knocking at the door. Because we can do it now with the temperature moderate where it is because we have to shut the entire county area system down. Uh, it's about a great process to do this. Uh, we're looking at on doing it on the Friday if it's approved, as opposed to doing it on the time and a half on Saturday. The one quote from the CC uh, down there that we have is a total of uh, $1,800 to no more than $3,600. That's factoring in possible time on Saturday. So my recommendation is that we accept the quote from Armor Craft Mechanicals for the cost of the gas that's alone is $3,150.85. And then we have a labor cost of $1,800 no more than $3,600. But my recommendation is that we accept this cost from the purpose on craft mechanicals to service this heat exchange. It's not a crisis situation. It's not going to blow up. It's not leaking water into the environment. It's just simply letting our chemicals from our closed loop system leak out into this tank that we have. And eventually, we're going to have a contract issue with the chemicals. Because they're putting in five gallons a month in this chemical to keep these uh, algaes and chemicals from rusting the inside of the pipe. Once that starts happening, we're talking a million bucks. And you do recommend CC now? I do. Up the I do. Okay, I'll make a motion to accept your recommendation of CCM's proposal on the um, plate and frame heat exchanger. But what they're saying is that it's not going to be over 3600 correct, if they do it during the week? Exactly. Okay. I'll second the motion. Thank you. Oh, I was going to say that for a second. Okay. Oh. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any questions or discussion? I've got a question. Okay. What um, I'm uncomfortable with, I mean, you can probably straighten it out in the contract. Assuming you're going to get a prompt contract. It does not say it maxes out at 3600 It says labor will be done on a time and materials basis, approximate cost $1,800 to $3,600. they are thinking they're going to do it for less than $3,600, and I certainly hope they do. But there's nothing that says there's a cap. Yeah, we can, we can uh, have them change that, but actually when he presented it to me, when I asked him about that $3,600, because I looked at it and I said, well, it $1,800 and $3,600. He said it's 1800 is an approximation because that's provided you do it on Friday and it's up and carry over to Saturday. He said, but it will be no more than $3,600. Okay, in, um, my, in, my, in my motion, in my motion, I'm going to state, Donna, this not to exceed $3,600. Or labor on. That's labor That's labor on. That's labor on. Yeah, that, that's well, labor on. Okay, this we'll get we just, I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of this. Okay, add up those two figures and not to exceed the total of those two figures. Will that take care of that issue? Somebody wants to buy a calculator that was to be $6,750.85. I'm sure we can get it over there somewhere. Yes. Yeah. 
Mr. Laswell? Yes. Mr. Bradshaw? Yes. Judge Roberts? Yes. Yeah. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, court for the Thanks, Molly. Okay, June, we've got the landlord contract to come back. Good morning again, June. Good morning. We held our public meeting this morning at 9 a.m. here at the courthouse. We had 23 people signed in in attendance, and I received 21 signed forms from those in attendance. All of those in agreement, I received none in opposition. I guess the two that didn't turn them in are staying. Um, this is the exact same grant that we submitted last year that did not get funded for the Maryville and Mount Washington pools. And I would be happy to read the description if the court says it's too sweet. Here's my record. It's exactly the same as, as last year. The only changes are a few tweaks in this application um, narrative that were recommended from um, our friends at Kipton. The description states, in 2010, Bullock County Fiscal Court partnered with the Bullock County Family YMCA to bring the Shepherdsville Pool into compliance with the Virginia Graham Baker Act and to reopen it after being closed in 2009. The YMCA got donations of material and labor totaling $14,899 and spent $10,427 from its own funds. The county paid $19,730 and the pool opened in May of 2010 for the summer season. In 2011, Bullock County Fiscal Court was awarded 32,500 land and water conservation fund money to remodel the Shepherdsville pool. The restrooms and concession stand area were gutted and completely redone. Portions of the concrete deck that had sunk were replaced. The entire deck area was resurfaced with a non-slip decorative concrete. A water odyssey splash pad was installed where the baby pool had been filled in with concrete. In addition to the total remodel at the Shepherdsville pool, a spray ground was installed where the Lebanon Junction pool had been filled in. The Lebanon Junction project totaled $67,626. Bullock County Fiscal Court was able to pay for this project in full because of the land water conservation grant money received for the Shepherdsville Pool, plus the operational savings from the partnership with the Bullock County Family YMCA. This year, we would again like to apply for land water conservation fund monies to remodel and upgrade the two remaining county pools in Maryville and Mount Washington. This project was denied in 2012 due to the amount of requests received versus the amount of money available for funding. We were strongly encouraged to reapply in 2013. The scope of the work and the budget are the same as in 2012's application. This would include remodeling the men's and women's restrooms at both pools, which are in desperate need of repair since they were built in 1971. It would also bring both pools into federal compliance with ADA guidelines. In addition to remodeling the restrooms, we would like to install spray ground features which would make both pools more family friendly. Maryville has a filled in baby pool area like Shepherdsville had. The Mount Washington pool has no place for smaller children to play. This feature added to the Shepherdsville pool was the most used area last summer and ideal for parents with small children. The Maryville area has a population of 7,554 and the Mount Washington area a population of 8,485. Both pools average 30 to 50 people per week, week day with 60 to 80 on the weekends. Both pools had significant usage the past two summers, even with the Shepherdsville pool being remodeled and reopened. An action is requested on. Action is requested um, for the judge to sign the resolution to submit the grant <coughs> and to put $75,000 um, into the general fund for the matching money, uh, totaling $150,000 to redo the two pools. Okay. <coughs> Can we make a motion for both into the same thing? Can we do a motion for both of them on the resolution of the Senate panel? I think you can mark it anyway. You want to be clear. Let's take the resolution first. We need action on allowing me to sign the resolution. So Thank you. We 
have a motion and a second to allow me to sign this land water conservation fund grant resolution. Any questions or discussion? <coughs> and Ms. Holden will call the motion. Ms. Ashwell? Yes. Mr. Hunt? Yes. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Mr. Bradshaw? Yes. Judge Roberts? Yes. Yeah. Motion. Here. Thank you. Next, um, Marky, can I just put the seventy-five thousand in my budget, or last year it was created for one hundred and the parts were not And since we did not get the grant, it was not.
of the Deputy Divine Statutes, the bonds are to bear interest, payable at such rates, and on the interest payment states that shall be established on this sale. Reference is hereby made to the full text of the ordinance, a copy of which is on file at the Office of the Lake County Clerk, 149 North Wall Street, shall be conducted for 165 for a complete statement of its provisions and terms. Given the first meeting at the regular meeting of the County District Court on the fifth day of March, uh, 2013, given the second reading, voted on, should be voted on, and passed. Uh, this regular meeting, the fifth court, 19th day of March, 2013. Thank you, Director. Okay, action is requested. <coughs> Thank you. Do we have a second? 
I'll set that motion. Thank you, Mom. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or discussion? And the Courtney may call the roll. Ms. Ashcroft? Yes. Mr. Hunt? Yes. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Mr. Bradshaw? Yes. And Judge Roberts? Yes. yes. Motion. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next match is turns on the new under old business. Action is requested on the memorandum of agreement with the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet and the Kentucky Department of Corrections. <coughs> oh, Jayla Lodge, do you want to say anything about this? Come on, I'll get to the podium you to do. I know that from what Kevin said last at the last court meeting, there's no money out of our pocket that we said. Correct. So um, it sounds like a win-win situation. I believe it is a win-win situation. I don't have to um, get with the treasurer on some of the um, figures as far as the retirement uh, working comp stuff figures mm -hmm. that we had to put with one or two of our workers for the crew. Um, we're going to have one to five um, inmates with one worker. And what they will do, they will send that money. It will be paid out of our payroll, and the state will reimburse uh, Blakeman for all fees, including their meals. So basically, what we will have to do is submit our meals or uniforms, any uses, uses that we have um, doing the job. The way I basically understand it is we are to report to our state garage. Our state garage is the one that would supply most of our equipment. They would be the one that kind of appoint us to where we will be working at, what we'll be doing. Um, I have been told, I don't know <coughs> yet, that there is some certificates that they can give the inmates as far as uh, being able to have some type of qualifications to work on weed eaters, mongoers, black topping. Uh, it's a long list there um, that I haven't really been able to get into all of it. Um, so both of these will be have to signed off, be signed off by the county judge executive. Uh, also by um, COC has to sign off on it. And the last time we were here, we were talking about, um, my question was, who was I working? It still falls under the same <coughs> criteria as my state program just now, basically. Um, when I was speaking and from what my level that I was be working is what my level of time still will be working at this present day will be those same type of people. So that takes me knowing that I'm gonna have to be a former group of people, first of all, because with this going on right now, if you remember, our SAP program has started also. So we're going to be trying to get the top types of people in our facility. We have to have 40 million to do that. Which, so I'm, I'm going to be all over the state trying to get people for this program and that program. So it's going to be pretty tough trying to get them in, which I, I'm sure I can do that. But it's going to take a little bit of time. So I'm working on this. I'm working as fast as possible, but as I, as I like for it too, because I'm also working with the staff program, because we have part two for that, um, to do the counseling and administrator out of the staff program, which will be starting hopefully going to be on May 8th with that program. But hopefully on the next, Well, I'd rather have people don't have any type of 
profit with money. Um, I don't want anybody that I want my best and my levels of ones and twos, which everybody's taking as level of ones and twos. So I'm going to be battling against some other people, other judges in the state trying to get those people, which I'm saying it, it can, it's possible that this is going to take a little bit of time. You're talking about transferring inmates from one facility to your facility? Yes, we'll have to do that. I don't have enough to form another crew here. Um, I have the crew I already have out that works under our, our county <coughs> slash state ULP program, which this is the, um, this is Kentucky Transportation slash county slash state, um, which I have formed a different group there, uh, which I, I, I want to do this, and I will do this, it's just going to take a little bit of time, considering all the other stuff that's going on. Basically, what I would, it has to 
see on this contract is saying it has to have your, your signature on it along with DLC. So once I got yours, I was sending the DLC and then the uh, transportation cabinet had to sign it pretty much. But I was just going to get the figures, which I mean, I could just get those to you because it is what it is. I mean, well, if the court will provide you permission to sign it, right? That's basically as it is, is now, right. then that's fine. No. I mean, it's Well, I want to get it in before that because, you know. For the next Yeah, before the, the next physical court. I mean, at least the paperwork. I want to be able to have it to uh, the transportation office. Because we're not going to be kind of doing this. And I don't, want, I don't know what the money situation is here. I don't want to be the last one on the, the end of it.
Um, I presented all of y'all with a letter from uh, the other attorney, Andy, to share, just because I wanted you all to understand where the case was and what it settled and what it's now. Um, I am a 30 year Bullet County resident. I've owned a business out here for 13 years. I'm on your tip the board. Um, I'm on the uh, proprietary commission board, trying for this estate. Um, as far as I know, I'm well thought of in the community. I'm active, I'm involved. Um, I have a pretty good level head on my shoulders. Um, I'm very involved in this community and what's going on. Um, for many, many years I've run a business out here and I realized how active you need to be in your community in order to help your clients and your community. And I'd like to be a part of some of the changes that we need to make out here. I believe Boulder County has um, got huge growth potential. We've got the only available land uh, south of Louisville. Anything <coughs> north of my exit, I believe UPS is either bought up or it's already uh, some of the homes. So we have a lot of for expansion um, Being a business owner, I think it'll be easy for me to talk to other business owners. I know what their needs and their wants are. Um, and I'd like to serve my community. Does anybody have any questions for me um, about anything? Sure, Bob. Come yeah. on, please, Bob. Well, if ethics board with Rick Clemmon and Greg Cochran in a situation, I think it was a year or a year and a half ago, I'm not sure, but we were strongly recommended David for that position. And I can understand the official court having some doubts because of the lawsuit which involved. But you mentioned previously about the lawsuits being settled, and we get to you here, and it's I don't think she won the case, so I think that problem should be resolved. Should be over. Thanks, Thank Paul. I want to read this letter. May I? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is from Amy Bashir, who is Governor Bashir's son. I serve as Truck American Attorney and Debbie Carter's attorney in their lawsuit against the city of Hillview. That lawsuit is now on appeal. But the underlying judgments are important in that they were rendered by a Bullitt County Circuit Judge and unanimous jury based on extensive evidence. Both of these fact finders concluded that Truck America had a valid contract with the City of Hillary, which the City of Hillary <coughs> breached. That breach caused the company millions of dollars in damages over a seven year period. To be clear, the judge specifically found that neither Debbie nor Truck America breached the underlying contract in any way. <clears throat> Truck America is a Bullitt County business that was booming before a city refused to keep its word. It suffered significant damages the underlying judgments show it was right to pursue its legal remedies. Government bodies need to realize when they are wrong and have to be bound by their contracts. If this court denies Debbie a seat on another government entity solely because she sued the city of Hillview, would seem to only continue the past wrong. And again, that's from Governor, Governor Bashir's son, Andy Bashir. And I've been uh, advised to find people in this community who have a strong relationship with the governor, and there he does. Again, this is the Economic Development Board, and it's time for some fresh people, new blood, be on all the boards. And uh, she does have a good relationship with the governor, and that's important, I think, for Bullock County. And Scott, would you like to say anything before we take a vote? The only, <clears throat> pardon me, the only thoughts that I would have is I think last time the big concern that everybody had was the uncertainty around the building litigation. Uh, clearly, a verdict's been rendered. Uh, any sort of uncertainty about uh, 
Ms. Carter's big bad business picking on the Port City of Hillview was resolved clearly in the other direction. Uh, so I hope that now that that issue is settled, that was the issue that everybody said was the problem before. Uh, that, that they were genuine in their concerns before and would vote accordingly now how that, that issue is being resolved. Motion to appoint Debbie Carter to the Economic Development Agency. Um, I do have the, I don't have the, the expiration the term on that later. Um, and I hope I receive a second, and I hope that Debbie passes this time. And if she does not, I will be asking each person why. Why are you voting no if you do vote no? If I can get a second, that would be great. I'll second motion. Thank you, Ruthie. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or discussions? I was voting the call roll. Ms. Ashcroft? Yes. Mr. Hunt? No. Mr. Laswell? No. Mr. Bradshaw? No. Judge Roberts? Yes. The motion did not. Okay, let's start with Magister Hunt. Why? Why not? Well, she's running the business and she's on a couple of other boards. That pretty well takes a lot of time as far as I'm concerned. Okay, what other board is she on? She's I'm on the proprietary commission and on the KIPTA board, which requires the KIPTA board is one hour out of my schedule a month, and the commission board is two hours out of my schedule every month. And the, propri the proprietary commission, that's an appointment of them for the year. Yes. I think it's important this court um, have a relationship with our government so that we can benefit from our state funds coming back to Fort County instead of staying in Frankfurt or one of the other counties. Mr. Hogg, any other, is it just a time restraint issue? No. That's, that's the only thing I have. Awesome. There's no other reason as to why you don't know? Just because she's on the proprietor with Gary and the Well, she has a business to run and she's on a couple of boards. That takes time. Mm -hmm. But I work a full-time job. I'm on this and I'm on another board. It takes time. And if you don't have the time to do it. Sir, I would be seeing here today, but I didn't have the time to participate.
Now, are these people, are they qualified to serve on boards? Because I've had some people on the boards, in fact, the one that we resigned from the EPA board, Del Russ, he no longer wants to serve. So I put him on the board, you all agreed to that, but he's resigning. So I don't know, I need some input from you. And they're qualified to sit on the April the 7th. I would wonder what makes them more qualified than myself, sir. 30 years in the county and 13 years in the business and being as involved as I've been. I'm looking for somebody in my district that I, for six years, haven't been able to get appointed. You had Bill Russ. Is he not from your district? Yes, that's his own board. But I've asked you for other names, but you, you haven't given me any names. You know, you know, sir, you haven't. Well, I had to hear it. You want to let you know you have not. I'll bring you some. Well, I will look forward to a May 12th second in this fiscal court meeting. But now, Joe, if they're not qualified, I, I cannot. We'll let this court decide whether they're qualified. Well, well, you've been on this court since 2007, and you all have been, been deciding who's on this board and who's not. Many people I've brought before you, even in my first term, you said no to. Many people you said no to. So, well, don't you think we should work together and try to get some people in this town together? Why don't you give me some names? Well, you have seven years to do that. Committee cannot make a recommendation on who the board should appoint. 
What the ethics uh, committee made a recommendation on is that the lawsuit was not a conflict, if I remember correctly. Uh, so that, that is a fine line distinction, but a distinction. So on appeal or not, if you rely on the ethics committee, they have already issued a rule. And I would like for the record, we've had an ethics committee, I think, since 1994, 96, but it never met until 2011. And I want to say, in the first four years of my administration, my administration for the record, there was not any um, desire, no desire for the bodies or the parties in that ethics commission to me.
thank you, Magistrate Bradshaw, for seconding that motion for Jerry Summers. And we have a motion and a second. Any questions or discussion? Jerry Summers is with Dean Global. That's arguably, should be arguably, the largest industry or the oldest industry in Bullet County. And um, he's a businessman just like Debbie Carter is. Any other questions, comments, or discussion? And Ms. Floater, let's call the roll and see how that turns out. Ms. Ashball? Yes. Mr. Hunt? Yes. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Mr. Bradshaw? Yes. Judge Roberts? Yes. Motion carried. Okay. Congratulations to being global for being on the EDA board. And Debbie, once again, thank you so much for your um, determination. Determination is a wonderful thing. And I should have requested on the female ladies. And I'll get you that, that term on the okay. Who is this year? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And I make a motion to approve the city's This lease, this lease may be entered into this 19th day of uh, March, signed between the Lake for part of the first part, and the Lake County Business Board, and then the leases, and the Paul and Paul area, BC. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or discussions? And the call on. Yes. Mr. Clinton. Yes. Mr. Lasso. Yes. Mr. Bradshaw. Yes. Judge Robert. Yes. Thank you, Donna. I don't think I'm missing some else. Thank you. 
and this is not a commission. It's a fiscal court. Um, so we can talk about this, and we'd be more than happy to make an appointment with you, um, but that's not applicable in our situation. Can I just put these numbers in the in the in the You can put them in the record. You can just give the bottom. But but I really think our house you have to get with the county Okay. Well let's see what I'm saying. Can can uh you said it's not gonna happen? I don't I don't think that's gonna help help this situation. I can I can advise for the county and I can tell you what our position is and where it comes from. If you need interpretation of that, unfortunately, like everybody else, you'll have to hire a lawyer because my job is to the county in the court. Okay. Can I, can I place these, just these pay records and the records just on this committee? 178-45.